Hey everyone, six quick tips for Space Age slash 2.0, which you will find useful when you start your run. The first tip, what I'm calling ghost bot insertion. So if I wanted to build something remotely, we're remote viewing Volcanus. If I wanted to say build another rocket silo over here, normally you'd have to place a requester chest and you know, we'll copy the recipe, yada yada. So a new feature that's been added here that is very useful is you can open, you can click the ingredients and then click it into the ingredients themselves and the bots will bring directly to the assemblers. You can see the bots are flying right now. They're filling up with steels, circuits, etc. This is very useful when you just need to make, you know, a small amount of uh, a certain number of items and you don't care to set up, you know, a longer term production thing. Tip number two, quality in recipes has to be the same when you were making something. Like if I select an assembler here, let's say an assembler two, all of these are normal, which means everything coming in here must be normal quality. You cannot use a mix of normal and higher qualities. If you want to select a higher quality recipe, you need to click it again and then select that. And now you will see that all of the ingredients must be rare. You cannot mix qualities. This is probably the single biggest thing that I've seen uh, trip people up. Lots of people have been coming into my stream and saying, you know, why don't you put quality earlier on, etc., etc. This is why you cannot have a mix of quality ingredients. You, you cannot just put, you know, some quality in, in your green chips early on and then have it trickle down the line. It doesn't work that way. It will block your system. I had an issue specifically on uh, my modules. That's what led me to discover this because I stuck quality in my earlier modules and it actually blocked these the, the later ones from being produced because these were set to the normal recipes only. So when you're doing quality, you need to be very careful with how you use it because it can actually block your systems. In the early game, I recommend just using quality to create additional quality modules and then using them just to gamble on like, you know, end game pieces of, or pieces of gear, not really end game, but you know, right now we're only on Folgora. So I've got, but I've got uncommon, you know, pretty much everything but the reactors in here. And so these are 39 move speed instead of 30. You know, we, we run a good bit faster. It's nice. It's obviously going to get much faster with higher quality. So you have to have homogeneous quality on your ingredients. You cannot mix and match. Tip number three. Coverex and logistics, uh, robot logistics, are white science now. now. If you're like me, you would hit blue science and you would immediately be focusing on... Um, whoops, it's not called white. It's called space science. If you're like me, you would hit blue science and you would immediately try to get your robots up. And the next thing after that is your nuclear power plant. And then you would, you know, further develop novice from there. Um, and uh, you would get your purple science for Covarex and then your yellow science for um, your logistics. And you, you would want to get your purple and yellow up relatively quickly. So the two, what I consider the two biggest things under each, you know, purple and yellow, the Covarex and the logistics are now both under space science, which is the white science. So there's a lot more under space science. It's a lot more important now. Uh, module twos are also gated under space, space science. So I think this is probably the most important one of, you know, white, purple, and yellow after blue, you should probably go for white first. I went for purple and yellow first because my idea was, you know, I was going to develop novice relatively normally in the normal order, you know, blue, uh, purple, yellow, then do white and, and then focus on space there. And I quickly realized my mistake because I'm like, where's the logistics? Where's the Covarex? Well, that's under space science now. Uh, what is under purple and yellow? Well, they're still, you know, you still want them eventually, but the main thing under purple that you're going to care about is the beacons and the automation th and the automation three, at least, you know, I'm talking early game, not late game, I'm talking like right when you get it, the, the tier three assemblers and the beacons are the most important things you will get there. And under yellow, it's mainly the gear, you know, you, you want, uh, the, like the, the fission reactor, the, the batteries, et cetera, et cetera. So essentially the new order I would recommend is after blue focus on just getting a space platform up just to make science. Like I've got a really, really crude one here. This is, you know, the first thing when I ever built, it's really, you know, dog shit, but it doesn't need to go anywhere. It just needs to stay in orbit, make white science and drop it down to the planet when necessary. That's it, you know, or, or newer platforms are obviously a little bit nicer and I'm working on an even bigger one. 
they're definitely going to get a lot fancier. Tip number four. Everything needs to be in one stack when you're creating things. Like if you have your mall, like this is our starting bus, and our, which essentially functions as a mall and supply for everything else. Uh, I had a lot of th these things circuit limited to less than one stack because you just you know don't really need one stack of a lot of things. This is now bad in 2.0 because when you are building a space platform, it will automatically request stuff for construction. And also when you were supplying one, you know, to, to go for another planet and you, and you were setting up your logistic groups for it, it will request things, but it will only launch a rocket. It will only load the rocket if there is a full stack. So everything that you were producing, if you have it circuit limited to less than one stack, now needs to be one full stack. Otherwise, it will not automatically launch because it will only, the way it works is the rocket requests an item. Even if you only need one on the space platform, you know, it will only launch it automatically if it has a full stack. A uh, little uh, addendum to tip number four. Do not insert anything aside from processing units, LDS, and rocket fuel directly in your rockets. Uh, some weird shit tends to happen when you, if you try to insert the stuff, you know, that you will actually need for constructing space platforms or colonizing. You, you want to have only these three items being inserted directly. You can also bring them by bots. And, uh... Like everything else should be supplied by the bots. And then when you tick the request for space platform box, it'll go automatically. Tip number five. When you are going to colonize other planets, such as Volcanus and Fulgora, you you know, you, you can you're loading up your platform with lots of materials. You know, like I bring lots of tier three assemblers, lots of substations. I didn't have to build any extra substations uh, on this planet, for example, because they stacked to fifty and I didn't even use fifty. Um, but when you are going and deciding what materials to bring, it helps to look at the wiki because this will show you things you don't have unlocked yet. So even if you don't have, say, Foundry unlocked yet, you can look it up, click on it, and see what it requires. And I will tell you right now, the one material you want to bring a good amount to both Vulca Vulcanus, Vulcanus and Fulgora is refined concrete. The reason being, this is needed... For both the foundry and the electromagnetic plant you can produce these both locally but it will save you a lot of time and shortcut a good bit of headache to be able to get your early foundries and early electromagnetic plants up really quickly because refined concrete is kind of an annoying substance to produce you know it requires four different ingredients including water and the concrete itself requires iron ore and stone brick which you know typically aren't used for anything else usually you just are smelting iron ore so yeah they're slightly annoying recipes they're not hard they're just a bit annoying. You're going to have to automate them eventually anyway. We have, uh, you know, concrete and refined con concrete being automated here so we can make our foundries and mining drills remotely. But if you bring, you know, say I brought 200 to Volcanus, uh, the foundries are 20 each, so that's 10, and the electromagnetic plants are, the, ele uh, the electromagnetic plants are 50, I believe. Whoops, that's not the wiki. then having enough to build your first 10 you know foundries or electromagnetic plants before you have to worry about setting up the chain is really nice this is especially important on volcanus because the recipe you're going to want to use for concrete on volcanus is a foundry recipe there is a foundry recipe specifically for concrete so it's nice to just you know go straight to the foundry recipe and set that up rather than having to set up the assembler version before worrying before eventually transitioning to the foundry version so refined concrete you know everything else is relatively obvious you know you want to bring some starter belt you want to bring you know your inserters power poles solar panels you definitely want to bring solar panels um even on fulgora which has very limited solar power you want to bring at least uh a, a little bit to start because even though it's you know ver very low it will help you out by getting let, helping you get your starting stuff up before you can actually build the lightning rods. Last tip, tip number six, dropping stuff from orbit. So this was something that I did, which I found very useful. The way I have my platform set up is I have this constant combinator with a switch right here. And when I turn this on, what it does is it takes the stuff that the space platform is gathering in orbit, the iron ore, 
the uh, the carbon and the ice, and it inserts it into the main hub. And then from the hub, I can set up a request on another planet in order to have it in, in order to have it be dropped automatically. And then I can feed that directly into smelters. I didn't really use this much on Fulgora. You know, as I said, we're just starting setting this up, so this is only like a couple hours of work. Uh, Volcanus, this was a lot more useful because. I, you know, you, you, you get your iron, your starting iron ore by mining rocks. There's no iron ore on this planet. You get it from the lava. In order to process the lava, again, you need foundries. This plays into the refined concrete thing. So by just having the space platform drop ore and then feed it into some electric smelters, it made my start much, much smoother. And you've got three, worse, th three resources up there. You've got... The iron ore, the, the ice can be melted into water, the iron ore can be smelted. The carbon has some other uses, uh, you know, you can check that in the Factoriopedia to look those up. I won't spoil that for you, but yeah, being able to drop all three resources onto the planet is very useful. So there you go, six quick tips, I hope this helps you out. These definitely helped me out uh, when I figured them out during the run. Uh, some of them I had to figure out the hard way. But yeah, hope that helps you. Thanks for watching. I stream most days at Twitch TV, SF Hobbit, and the factory must grow.